Have you ever wanted to dispense a very specific number of items? Maybe you made a pumpkin pie shop where you want it to be whenever someone makes a payment, a very specific number of pumpkin pies come out. Um, well, I sure did. And so I came up with this design and I thought I would share um, how the design actually works and how to build it for people that want to know. So currently I have it set up where it's going to dispense be exactly seven items. Um, you can customize it to however many you want though. Over here in the hoppers, um, it will be the number of items you put in these hoppers minus one will be how many is dispensed. That extra one that's in there is just because of some delay and whatever. Uh, but you can customize it by just adding or subtracting items from here for how many are dispensed. Now, the cool part of my design is that when you're dispensing items and you, let's say, want to dispense some more, you can push it again immediately afterwards without having to wait for it to reset, which I haven't seen another design that does that. There might be some out there, but uh, this is my take on it. Now, if this is a bit too slow for you, there is a doubly quick version this one over here, if I get rid of the items already in here, will dispense me exactly 14. Um, and so I've got the exact same number of items over here in the hoppers. Um, so it's that original seven that we were talking about, but times two. Um, so the downside of this one is that it can only do even number of items. Uh, so if you need an odd number dispensed, you're gonna have to go with this design over here that's a bit slower. But if you have an even number, then you can pick the quicker one and it will come out doubly quick. Now, if you just want to know the block by block building of this, I will be uh, putting a timestamp on screen right now on where to skip to at the end to get to that part. But if you want to know more about the specifics of how this actually works and uh, learn a bit of redstone technology, um, I will be getting to that right now uh, because I have split this up into a couple different sections to kind of make it easier to understand what's actually going on here. Now, if we start with this section over here, this is what's the the clock of the build. Now, the clock isn't actually the thing that um, counts the items because that's like the hoppers over there that determines like how long it's dispensing for. This one is just making a little circuit that goes on and off a bunch. Now, this is the slow version right here, but if you wanted it to be quick, you could get rid of that repeater, replace it with some redstone dust, and now it's even quicker because the repeater slows it down a bit. Uh, when you just have redstone dust, it's very quick. Now, if you want to replicate this, the only thing you have to know is that you need to put in subtract mode because otherwise it just doesn't do anything. But in subtract mode, it does a little flashing. And if you want your dropper, you don't have to put it directly here like I did. You can put it like over here, which that doesn't actually point into it. But, you know, you could put it off to this side or have some redstone coming out this way and then put it over here. It's, it's all up to you. Now, this part of it is kind of the unique special part that actually counts how many items you're going to be dispensing and allows you to dispense another set of items immediately after the first. So kind of similar to how a lot of other designs work, we're using hoppers over here to actually count the items um, that are going to be dispensed, like determining the exact length of time. Um, so this is our input over here in our design. And when I flick it, you'll see that the redstone is on for a bit, and then it turns off after it is finished emptying into the, the other hopper next to it. So we're reading off of the actual hoppers with the comparators to say, hey, I've got items in here until all of a sudden it doesn't, and that's why it turns off. Now, we're reading out of both of them because we want it to be when we want to read again for the next set of items to be dispensed, that we can immediately read out of the other hopper. So we're always reading out of one or the other of the hoppers, and it just depends on which one we're flipping between at the moment for which one we're actually reading out of. Now, when we're reading out of, let's say, um, this hopper, which is what it had just done, um, we need this one over here to be locked. So the hopper, when a hopper is locked, I should say, if you don't know, um, it stops it from pushing items into containers next to it. So even though the hopper, if I get down here, is pointing into the hopper next to it because it's currently locked, it's not sending it items. And we decide how it's locked by having some redstone torches over here and the piston pushing this block back and forth, um, changing which one is actually being powered at the moment. So this one's locked, so it's not pushing it. 
This one is free to flow items. So it was flowing the items out this way. And this was reading items until all of a sudden it didn't have anything left to read. And so we can see the inverse of this happening when we flip it. Um, this one is now being the one that's reading out. Um, very quickly it turned off though. And this one is the one that's now locked. And this is the one that's now free to have the items flow. And so it's swapping back between the hoppers on which one it's reading from. And so we can just see that as we look at this, that now it's off, we turn it back on. It's reading for another set amount of time, then it's off again, and it just keeps on going back and forth. Um, and because these two pistons need to be in opposite uh, like modes from each other, one needs to be pushed and the other one needs to be retracted at any moment, we have this torch over here just to flip the signal and then push into this one. Now, while a lever totally works for this design and you don't need this next part technically, it doesn't make much sense from a user experience point of view that a lever um, would work for dispensing items every time you flip it. Like a lever feels like, you know, one flip direction is like on and the other flip direction is off, right? It doesn't make sense that every time you flip, it's another on like that logically doesn't make sense to our human brain of like what a lever is. And so that's where this little, um, what's called the T flip flop comes in. It takes a button, which makes much more sense for every time you push it, it is another on, right? Um, and it turns it into the signal of essentially what a lever is. But T flip flop is the correct like redstone and technically like computer engineering term and all that sort of stuff. Um, and this T-flop is just very simple. All it does is it turns this uh, bulb on and off, and you can read if the bulb is on or off with the little comparator. And so you can see that when you push it, it goes into the on state, you push it again, and it goes into the off state, kind of like how we were flipping the lever on and off and creating a new, a new command every time. I don't know what the right term is for this. Like every time you're turning it on, right? You're turning it on for a bit, and then it automatically turns itself off. So you don't have to worry about the off part, you're just turning on and turning on. And so the same thing happens over here where you're turning it on and you can turn it on again and you can turn it on again and that sort of thing. And then you combine these all together where you put the T flip-flop into the actual input over here, which is this block, into the timer that determines how much time it's running for. And then the timer runs into the clock that actually dispenses out the items as the timer is going. And if you're new to Redstone and this all seems very complicated to you, I encourage you to try to split these things up into different little parts because it really helps figure out what you're doing because if you try to conquer it all in one big go, it's like too much, right? You want to figure out the little clock part first, then you want to figure out the little timer then how to make it into a little button push. And so you can solve them all individually and then come back together later and put them all into one cohesive thing. Now we're to the part where I'm gonna get to actually how to build it block by block. So these are the items you're gonna need. Here's all the redstone components. Um, the bulb can be any version of the bulb. Doesn't need to be waxed, can be any oxidation, just needs to be a, a bulb. Um, and then you also need some building blocks, not exactly 64, I just happen to have 64 here. Now let's start with where the input actually is. You're going to be putting your input into this bulb, um, whether the button is directly on it, or maybe it's like a little bit away, but you want the redstone line to be facing into this button somehow. And then directly next to it, you're going to have the comparator which then goes over into this block over here that's going to power a piston on top of it. And it's also going to flick this torch over on this side, um, which then we're going to run some redstone over to, which the redstone then goes into this block, which has a different piston on it. And this one will be pushed, and this one won't be yet. Now we're going to want to put some blocks over here next to the redstone wire. And we're going to be wanting to put a couple of torches on the blocks next to it. Technically, these torches could be down here on the floor if you want, or on the other wall. They just need to be here. Now we're going to be putting in the hoppers next. So you're going to want the hoppers facing each other so that the little bits are connected like that. And over here next to the hoppers on the other side, 
you're going to want to put these comparators actually reading out of them. And then over here on the other side of where this piston is pushing its block, you're going to want to put two repeaters over here so it can pull the signal out and extend it at the same time. And you're going to want to combine the signals from each of these into one single wire. And now you want to run out over here a few blocks and you want to put down a comparator and some redstone in sort of a look like this. Um, you just need a repeater somewhere in there. It could also be over here and not over on that side. And this will make the clock for the slower version that's going to do any number of items. Uh, but if you want to do the quicker one that can do even numbers, um, you just put a little redstone like that and you don't even need those extra blocks there. And I realize I actually forgot to tell you guys to put a dropper on here. I do not know how I forgot to put that in the barrel, but you need the dropper to actually dispense the items out. Or I guess if you wanted to actually dispense them and not drop them, you could put a dispenser there. Up to you on that one. Now, the dropper doesn't have to be directly here. It needs to somehow grab the signal from some of this redstone over on this side. So you could put it over here, you could put it there, 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 or have the redstone line coming out somewhere and then having like the hopper dropper over there. I'm getting my words mixed up. But that is it. This is the final thing. And hopefully you all have enjoyed that. If you want to go see some of my build over here that I made, the actual pumpkin pie shop, because it's quite a beautiful build, um, then go check out my video on the Rotten Block SMP where I actually built it. And go check out some of the shenanigans that are going on there. And with that, I will see you all next time.